Yo guys, what is up? It is Mushroom Gecko here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video since two years. Yeah, I, have, I haven't posted a Minecraft video since two years, and I feel super old saying that. And um, today we are doing a Redstone Commander, and if you can't tell already from my third person front point of view, or me running around with this thing flying around me, I'm doing another iteration of my capes that I did four years ago. <laughs> Why am I doing capes, you ask? Well, because I love my capes. Uh, once once the armor stands came out, I'm like, I got to put a banner on that. So yeah, it was five days after the armor stands came out. I made my first cape, and I made a video on it. And it was super, super, super dope, and I love it. And I wanted to remake it in a 1.14, 1.15 style. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's a lot smoother than my first video. It's a lot better looking. It looks super, super, super dope. Uh, there's still a lot of command blocks like usual, but trust me, it really is not that hard to grasp. And I'll explain all these later to you guys. Not that hard at all. Uh, in fact, it's actually a lot less command blocks than what I used for my first one, believe it or not. It's just uh, I added two new features, and I'll explain those features later. So the first thing I have to note is uh, there is a little gap between you and your armor stand, or cape, and that's fine. Uh, same with sprinting. A little gap, but that's fine. You know, nothing, nothing too big, though. You know, it's, it's a cape. It's cool. Once you have, if you have armor on, it uh, should lower that gap a little bit, right? Um, so yeah. Also, if you go into first person, you know, nothing, nothing too bad. Once you look down, oh my God, it's an armor or it's a cape. So here's the thing. Uh, you can you can break it. You can break blocks, and you're like, but mushroom kick out. Why? How? How? That's like impossible. That's illegal. FBI, open up. Uh, and I'll explain to you how I can punch to my armor stand in a little bit. So, the first feature that I'm super excited to show you guys involves water, but it is not the pirate ship. But don't worry, guys. The pirate ship is back. Seriously, do not worry. It is, it is back. All right. So, let me hop into here. Let me hop into the water. And if you can't already tell, look at this. I am swimming with my cape flush to my body. It looks super, super awesome, right? And if you pop out, boom, you want to go back in, you want to take another swim, you're good. Also, if, you, uh, if you're if you in an ocean monument or you're standing on the ocean floor, your cape stands back up with you, it's super, super awesome. And I'll explain how that works in a little bit. Also, let's go up here to this very, 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 very high pillar. And I don't know why I made the pillar this high. I probably shouldn't have when starting the video. Oh, um, also, a little side note. Uh, it works on creative, too. So if you're flying around, you can have a cape behind you. It's cool. It's cool. Um, so, yeah, let's go all the way up here. You can see it flickering. You can see it below me. Um, yeah, there's, there's little bug glitches, stuff like that. It's not the best system, kind of like my first video. But it's definitely a lot better. Oh, I was falling. <laughs> I'm like, why is my cape going above me? And I'm like, oh, I'm falling. Yeah, so going up here, going up here, going up here. Um, it's going to involve the elytra. That's why we're going so high. So let's chill here. Let's put on our elytra and let's go. So, yeah, if you're flying with your elytra on, you have your cape to fly with you. It is super, super Awesome. Looks super dope. Right? Let's go all the way down here. Right? Plop down. Take our elytra off. And let's... Wait, wrong elytra. Let's take our elytra off. And let's talk about the command blocks. So, this is the main one that runs, you know, you walking around and stuff. Ooh, real quick, before I get into it. I want to show you guys the pirate ship. It is back, and it is glorious. Although we use different boats now than what we it was when I first made my pirate ship, it still looks super awesome. In fact, I think it looks a little better. So yeah, let's go back over here. Let's turn that line off. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, you can push your boat, the uh, the uh, armor stand, the, the cape goes with it. Let's turn this off. It doesn't come to me immediately, but... Uh, if we go in here, press done, it comes back to you. It's cool. In fact, I want to show you guys a little quick glitch before we get into here. Not really a glitch, but it's really weird. If you um, if you take that out, it's probably going to compare it. Uh, and then you activate it. You know, it works as intended, right? But 
it pulls back right away. It's so weird. I think it has something to do with prioritization. Um, so if this one is active, um, you know, it's going to come towards me. But if you activate another line of command blocks, it this one takes priority over this big line. And I don't know why that is. But if you, uh, it's really, really, really weird. So let's put this back because my understanding of redstone is, uh, <laughs> is this. Uh, is that a comparator should power this and stuff like that. It's weird. Let's go. Can't. Whoa. Press done. Get our stuff back, right? Okay. So, let's talk about this Mac Daddy thing right here. This is on two OR gates. And these OR gates are connected to the swimming in the elytra and also the boat. Or at least it should be connected to the boat. And it's weird. I mean, it, it, it kind of works. It, it turns these off. It allows it to go over to the boat it doesn't come over to me at all it works as intended but when you turn it off it doesn't work as intended and it's super weird so let's hop into this first command block so yeah now again this whole line runs me walking around like this with my cape so if we go into here it looks like a long line of code it is a long line of code but it's super 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 simple so what this line of code does is say execute at the nearest player and i'm the only player in this world execute at the nearest player to run a teleport command bringing the minecraft armor stand over to me and uh, that's all that first block does pretty simple this second one all it does is it executes at me to run a teleport command to make the armor stand turn 180 degrees and i'll show you guys why i do that because if i turn it to zero it, it's the stick. It's the stick. You don't want the stick. You, you want you don't want the stick to be showing. So we go oh, wrong one. We go into here and we are going to turn this back to 180. So yeah, we want the cape to be facing outwards and not that stupid little ugly stick. So let's go into here. This next one is to execute at the nearest player, which is me once again, to run a teleport command with the armor stand going 0.8 blocks below where I am. Yes, you can do decimals in Minecraft, and I just figured this out as I was making this. So if we were to make this, you know, normal, it's going to go up in the air. We don't want that up in the air. Up in the air is not okay. So we're going to do negative 0.8, because what that does is it makes it flush with our shoulders, right? You know, we want it to be a cape, flush to our shoulders, flush to our neck. So uh, yeah, that's what that command block does. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Are these All these are doing are just teleporting the cape to certain positions. Nothing too drastic. Over here, it, lo you're, it looks super weird. You're like, Mushroom Gecko, what is this? Trust me, it is fine. Once again, execute at the nearest player to run a data merge of the nearest entity of type equals armor stand. Now, this limit equals one is because the data merge command does not like, you know, just regular that. It's like, oh no! So you have to do limit equals one because it doesn't it doesn't like a single input. It wants two inputs or more, and it's weird. And I, I don't like that, but the computer likes that, and I'm just going to do what the computer does. So, anywho, um, all this limit is doing is uh, making the limit um, of armor stance that this executes on equal to one. So, if I had another armor stand in here, uh, it would only execute on this armor stand or that armor stand, whichever one is closer to the command block. Uh, in this case, it's only one armor stand, so it's just going to execute to this armor stand, and it's going to make me have a cape. So, ooh, wrong one. Oh, wait, no, yeah, no, wait, uh, yeah, never mind, it is the right one. Okay, so the pose head 000, okay, that seems a little redundant because that's how the armor stand comes anyways. So I'll explain why we need this after we go over the boat and the elytra. So the head, you know, makes it pretty much a default armor stand. And then we're going to also have marker one. So what marker one does is, as you saw me, you know, dig out my thing, the armor stand's right here. I'm punching at my armor stand. You know, it's not dying, it's not doing things, you know. I can place my blocks back, even though my armor stands all up in my face, and it's like, hey, dude, where's my money, you know? But it's cool. So, what that marker does is it makes the hitbox of the armor stand super, 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 super small. And it also allows it to, or it also allows you to do some weird things with lighting. And that's what this last block does. So... What we're going to do is execute at me, run data merge. We're going to do another data merge at 
uh, the armor stand. So we're doing a, a, an, a, a, I can't talk, an independent data merge from this data merge. We could technically combine these two, but for some reason Minecraft doesn't like that. It's like, yeah, and well, no scrub. So we have to make them to separate data merges. So what this data merge does is it sets the armor stand on fire. Yeah, I know. No, pro probably doesn't sound too hot, uh, no pun intended, for something made out of wood, you know? But here's the thing. I have a small invisible armor stand with no base and no gravity. Um, pretty simple to summon. I'll have that in the description. Um, so yeah, I just summoned an, uh, a little armor stand, no base, no gravity, invisible, invulnerable, uh, wearing my cape. Or wearing wear my banner to, or, to, yeah, my banner to turn into a cape. So... What this fire does is it uh, gives a fire tick of 10,000 to my armor stand. So what the marker does is not only does it make it have no hitbox, but it also makes it so that the fire does not appear. So that's why you can't see any fire on this armor stand right now, but it is on fire. Now, the whole reason why we have this marker and the fire thing is because if we didn't, the, armor st um, the banner, cape, whatever you want to call it, will look black. And if it's black, that means the armor stand is inside of a block where there is no lighting. So to fix that, we just set it on fire, give it some lighting, and bada bing, bada boom, it looks pretty good. So let's go over here to the swimming one. Now, the swimming one is very, very, very similar to the one walking over there. Except what we're going to do is execute at P, at the nearest player, if a block 0.01 on the y-axis below the player is water run the same teleport command as the first block over here so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna run this execute at the nearest player if the block once again is 0.01 uh, or if the block 0.01 below the player is water we're gonna run that same teleport command doing the 180 thingy let's probably take that zero out i mean it's okay if you keep that zero there but it just looks stupid so this one same same deal uh execute 0 0.01 test if the block below the player is water run a teleport command and these three carrots are something that um that makes it so it looks like this while you're swimming so it makes it look flush to you while you're swimming so here's the thing the carrots are directional, right? So if we just had tilde, 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 like normal people would, it would look very weird. And allow me to show you. So as you can see, you know, it looks meh, it looks okay. It's 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 going weird places. Right here looks normal. But if uh, going off on the corner over there, right here, it looks like it's in front of you a little bit over here, it's over to your left, we don't want that. So what that carrot does is it makes it directional instead of uh, cartesian, right? So wherever we are, so it makes it relative to our x coordinates, right? Or z coordinates, not x, z, x, y, z. I'm stupid if I kept saying x, I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, our Z coordinates. So if we make it comparative to our Z coordinate, it will be flush with us no matter what direction we go to, right? And that's what we want. We don't want it to go off on the quarter or go in front of us. We want it to be flush with us. So that's what those three carrots are. And it also made it negative 0.5 because when you're swimming, I think you either go, uh, I think you go a little slower than uh, running, but also a little faster than walking. We don't want that S. I didn't. I don't know why I put that there. So uh, instead of negative 0.8, it's negative 0.5. And it's okay if you are confused about all this. It sounds like I'm rambling. It sounds like I'm speaking some sort of alien language. It's all cool. I'm going to put all these in the, in the description, uh, breaking it up, um, telling you which command blocks they uh, work with and how to set them up. And it's all cool. It's okay if you don't get this. It's super, super, super chill. And uh, yeah, so the last command block here... Um, is pretty much the, the same the same deal we had through all here. It's the testing of the water thing, but the pose of the head is negative 90. So the reason why I have negative 90 is because if it's zero, like the first one over there, what it's going to look like, you know, it's going to be normal. We don't want it to be normal. Normal is not cool, you know. We want it to be negative 90 
with the head tilt. So pretty much all this is doing is making the armor stand look down, looking down at the ground, boy. So that's all it's doing. So that's all that negative 90 is doing. I know I just said that three times in a row and that's super redundant and I'm sorry. So over here. So, so, okay. Yeah, this is what the, uh, the swimming thing does. And sorry if I'm going all over the place. I haven't recorded in so long. Um, over here. So this block is a little different. This line right here is a little different. So this first block is what, what it does is test if the nearest player has in their slot 102B, which is their armor slot, like their chest plate slot, if they have an elytra. And if they do, it's going to run a game rule command, uh, or going to run a game rule command block output false. And uh, it's just a little arbitrary thing. I don't, I didn't want it to say like output high over and over and over again. It would just flood the screen. So I just did something like it's non invasive, it's stupid, you know, something like that, right? Doesn't, doesn't matter. And plus, we want command block outputs false anyways, because otherwise the screen would be flooded of like uh, banner teleported this, 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 and we didn't, we don't want that. So once this is active, so let me grab an elytra. I thought I had an elytra, but apparently not. Let's grab an elytra, put it on. As you can see, this comparator activates and it runs this first command block. So it executes at a player if the block below them or, or below them, uh, 1.25 blocks below them is air. So it's pretty much doing the same thing as what the water thing did over here, except with air being 1.25 blocks below you so if that's true it's going to run a teleport command make an armor stand go to you you know same deal go over here same deal or same same uh first part is that one block right there it's going to um execute at the player at the block 1.25 blocks below them is air it's going to run a teleport command making it go 180 same deal as the first few blocks as everything else this one is a little different. So this one makes it so when you're flying in your elytra, it is negative 0.5 blocks on the Y lower and two blocks in front of you. And the reason why we do that is because we fly so fast, the, the armor stands a little delayed. So to compensate for that, we make it go two blocks in front of where it's going to be and 0.5 blocks below where it's going to be. So if we fly like this, you know, it looks like that. It's in front of us and that's what we want, right? So as we fly, it sort of, not completely, looks like it's flying with us. And that was my laptop. <laughs> um, so if we were to take these out, what it would look like is this. So, you know, it's chilling with us, right? But once we start flying, it does not chill with us anymore. It wants to go behind us and it looks really, really high. It looks too high for our liking. So we're gonna change that to two and negative 0.5 and bada bing, bada boom. We have a somewhat flush banner flying with us. Cool. And that's why we do that. So this last block right here, is like the same block we did over here. We're just making it look down. So it's not like, you know, straight up and down and awkward when we fly. So the, um, so this one, you know, it's just your normal walking one. This one is if you're swimming and yes, I know some of you might be asking, but can you swim with the light straw and it will still be flush? Yes, that is the case. See, check that out. It still works. It still works. It's cool. It's running the water command, not the elytra command. So, the last one over here is the boats. Let me take this electro off. It looks distracting. It distracts you guys from the beautiful sexy cape. So the first command block right here is pretty much doing what this line does. So this, this, so this line right here is pretty much what this line does almost identically, except all it changes is instead of executing at the nearest player, it executes to the nearest entity that is a boat. That's pretty much all this does. Same with here. Um, this is nearly identical to the normal walking one. Same thing here. Execute out the boat. Run. 
uh, you know, running at the boat, teleport it uh, 0.5 blocks below. So uh, this one's a little different. Instead of 0.8 below, it's 0.5 below. A little different. Uh, right here, it's the marker one. Uh, I forgot to take out this fire because it really doesn't work at all. So it needs to be independent. I don't know why it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, the same head positioning and the same marker thing as right here except it's going towards the boat instead of us. And same with this last one, going towards the boat and not us, and it's the fire one. Uh, we probably don't really need the fire execution here because it not, because the armor stand isn't going inside of a block. The only block that's going inside of is a water block, and a water block is transparent, and the, uh, the armor stands don't turn black when it's out of a transparent block. So we probably don't need that, but I just keep that there just to be safe, just to be safe. So let me explain the actual wiring of this real quick, and then we'll wrap this up. So if either the boat, or no, not, not the boat, either the swimming, the boat, or the elytra lines are active, it will turn off the normal walking one so that these can execute, right? Because if this is executing and this is executing, it can cause some weird things. So let me show you real quick. If I turn this on, it causes this OR gate to turn off. And it causes it to go over to the boat. Because if this was still activated, it would be teleporting over there, then over to me, then over to there, then over to me. But earlier, I proved that to you guys. It's not the case. And it's weird. And I don't know why. But if it behaved in normal fashion, that's what it would be doing. So, yeah. I hope you guys liked my new iteration of Minecraft capes, the 1 1.14, 1 1.15 capes. I am very, very, very proud of them. After four years, or yeah, yeah, four years of my first cape video, I am so proud to be doing them again. Uh, I had pretty much had to relearn all of the command block command because instead of data values like one for dirt, it's now Minecraft colon dirt and it's so weird and the execute command was all changed up and you can't do test for anymore so you have to change that all into the execute thing and I know you guys out there who are avid command blockers are like, but dude, that's been out for like such a long time. I understand that it's been so long since I've done command blocks. I feel so dirty not taking care of my command block babies even more. Uh, so yeah, pretty much had to relearn <laughs> command blocks for this video. But it's cool, it's cool. I love the learning experience. Uh, and I hope you guys loved the new cape iteration from my first time doing this. So yeah, like always, I will put all of these in the description, all of the commands, breaking them up, uh, telling pretty much, uh, telling you pretty much how to set them up. And now instead of having, you know, the it was the impulse one, right? Yeah, instead of having the impulse block, uh, which just activates to one redstone tick, we now have the the uh, repeat, which I love. I love the repeat block, and I don't know why it's not doing stuff. Hello? Hello? Oh, I know why. Because block updates exist. And I'll look real quick. Oh, nope. Bada bing. Break that. Do that. And it's back. So yeah, just block updates are weird and stuff. So you can run this on your own survival world. It will work perfectly fine, except for the boat. You have to go in here. You have to press done. And that's the only thing that you have to do. Or if you want to do, you can just break one of these. And that's how... You can do it, you know, without having to go into the command block and changing it up if it scares you. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the capes. Hope you guys enjoyed the new features that I made with my capes. And, yeah, so that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Live a wonderful life in the mycelium mushroom. Every time the clock goes in, keep those gems shining, everyone. Get quote. Boop. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.